thank you. Josh, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, thanks so much for the chat today. Um, I know how much you love it here in Australia. It's It's been quite a while. You must be excited to be heading back. Yeah, it's been too long. Um, since we, I think we came last with, with Bring Me and Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. So it's been a while since we've been down there. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to it. And yeah, just looking forward to seeing our, our people, you know, doing our thing, playing a headline show. It'll be great. Uh, speaking of your people, um, I've been a long time fan and I've seen your shows every um, every visit, every time you come here, the progression in venue size um, and fan following. Is it still a bit of a pinch me moment for you to still be gathering steam 20 years on? Uh, well, yeah, first, firstly, thank you very much for doing what we do and supporting us. That's pretty sweet. Um, and, yeah, I guess, like, you know, it's... Um, when when we first started the band, it was very much, uh, I guess, a vehicle to avoid, you know, going to college or uni and stuff we didn't really want to do or getting jobs that we didn't want. And it was about just the fact we loved playing music together. And, you know, it was very much um, a bit of a whirlwind like it is for most bands if they kind of go from inception and then sort of a year later they're playing in front of a couple hundred people or whatever it takes. It, it doesn't really feel real. So I think our thing was always, I hope this lasts for a while. You know, we wanted longevity. We wanted an opportunity to really be able to enjoy it. So I think the fact that we're coming back and I think this is like our ninth or 10th time in Australia um, and being able to do that and people still be interested and invested in the band and want to see what we're doing is, is um yeah, it's really kind of a bit of a, it's a bit of a strange, bit of a strange thing, but it's what we always kind of, wanted as our uh, as our kind of mission statement was to have that so yeah looking forward to it and looking forward to trying to cram eight albums worth of music into an hour and a half that makes sense it's always fun <laughs> that's always the struggle isn't it trying to pick the set list for the shows <laughs> literally yeah I've, I've, i have given up in those conversations at this point i let everybody else just get on with it <laughs> now, <Too much. laughs> can we expect another making of the album documentary? I know um, we got one for Sinners and Cavalier Youth. Is that something that you might look at again? Uh, we did something similar to that for Sucker Punch. We did like Made in Thailand's kind of video, um, but we didn't really film uh, whilst we were making Truth to Go. I mean, Matt, uh, Matt Barnes filmed a couple of things on this like flip cam or whatever it was he was using in this phone um for just like general social media content but we haven't like made anything bespoke for that but there's conversations of maybe because we're kind of about to embark on a pretty hefty uh touring schedule i think we might bring somebody out for that and maybe make something within that we we'll see but um yeah just yeah there's no there's no like yeah not to mention their sorts for that sort of thing yeah. Um, now, on Truth Decay, there has been a couple of collaborations. Um, it's something you sort of haven't done really since early on, back in um, Sinners. Why was it the right time for, for that now on Truth Decay? Um, I guess it was, you know, the right artist at the right time as well. Um, there's definitely been moments in time where in previous records we've had in conversations with people and having them involved but it kind of also got to the point where it's like we're not trying to clout clout chase somebody to be on a record you know it's like it's got to be it's got to be for a purpose they've got to make the song better we've got to feel like there's I have an opportunity to introduce a brand new artist that we're really digging or there needs to be a cross-pollination between fan bases that we think is worthwhile for both both bands or both artists it's like it just didn't really make sense for a while. Um, and then with No Future, I was pretty much, from the moment we even had like the opening riff, if you like, the opening synth, it was like, fuck, I feel like Rao would be really good for this. I feel like he could even even add some ex, uh, some additional production mm -hmm. um, on his part and like just really like Shikari it, you know, and show us, showcase that on this song. And uh yeah, that came together really nice uh, with him. 
and we've met them for a very long time since we were both like teenagers both bands are very very young when we met so it's cool that uh, we've gone through the myspace era and put out a record in 2023 which has <laughs> us both on it um and with cody it was just like you know that we had the song and i really wanted uh a female artist um but also i wanted an artist that was like it just wasn't like necessarily necessarily anyone's radar um and my friend told me about Cody and that she had this, you know, um, unreal voice and all this sort of stuff. And like, I was like, yeah, cool. I check it out. And the first song I heard was like, um, should have known better or should have been, a, I should take better care of myself. What's, I think it's one of those two things. Anyway, I can't remember the exact name of the song, but um, it was like this piano ballad and it just blew my socks off. And I was like, fucking hell, she can, she's got this unbelievable character to her voice. And uh, yeah, just wanted that sort of haunting element to be like, on the song because the song itself has got that kind of massive attack like quite um cinematic sort of vibe to it and i just thought she would do a really good job on it so yeah stoked we got to work with her and um become good friends and yeah it's an opportunity to kind of as i said elevate another artist that's coming through and definitely all for that so um yeah those were the kind of the reasons behind the collaborations yeah, well, speaking of elevating artists, you had um, Australia's very own um, yours truly on the European tour with you. Thank you so much for supporting our artists here in Australia. Yeah, 100%, of course. Um, now, looking at You Meet Six opening the vault up and, and reworking a few songs for Truth Decay, is that something that you might look at in the future of an album of some of these songs that you're sitting on? Uh, I feel like we kind of, we, I'm not sure, truthfully, um, what is left <laughs> in the vault of any like, merit. But um, yeah, it was very like, we wanted, uh, we had we had Heartless and Ultra Violence, which could have been on Sucker Punch and just didn't really work. Um, yeah. I don't think the songs are like ready to be honest with you. Uh, whereas with Heartless and, and Ultra Violence this summer, I'll, and Truth to K felt like it like added something to the record. And um yeah, it was just it was well it's just some songs we'd completely forgotten about. And uh as we as we were putting everything together, Chris mentioned that he felt there was some stuff that's been overlooked. Oh, and a love letter to those who feel lost is also a song that's like was meant to be on six. So, you know, going back sort of 2018. Um I think it just kind of is that. It, it, acknowledging that a song is never dead, like just because it doesn't make it onto that particular body of work that's, you know, in progress, that doesn't mean that if it's if there's something really great there that you can't resuscitate it if you like. And that's kind of what happened with all three of those songs. Um, and maybe there'll be a time down the line where, right now, I think nothing else would make sense, but maybe there will be. I guess it also, you know, it depends on whether or not we how quickly we want to get back to the studio. If we get back to the studio, there's so many different things that are kind of like we need to line up for, for some of those songs to do the light of day. But, um, yeah, never say never, I suppose. <laughs> now, what can we expect live when you get to Australia off the new album? Can you give us a little sneak peek as to what you might be playing? Um, honestly, it's just, um, just kind of a reflection of the eight albums that we have and um you know we're trying not to do that thing that when a band has a new album out just like cramming that whole record into the set and then playing a couple of others it's like we're trying to space out you know, as much of the albums as possible in the, within the set so i think if you're a fan of you me uh, there'll be something in there for you throughout the set um you know, more often than not, it's a couple of sort of like two or three songs from each album kind of make up the spine of the, of the, of the set list. So, if not more. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a good run. Well, now, just um, just earlier, I saw your video on Instagram where you're saying one of your top five shows was the Roundhouse in Sydney. Um, being a Melbourne girl myself, what can Melbourne do to win to win you to number one spot? Because we, we <laughs> like a bit of rivalry with Sydney. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, truthfully, like I, I would also say that 
you know, Melbourne has always been, um, it's been one of our favourite places to play in terms of, you know, I think we've done like the hi-fi a bunch of times, and, like done all the billboards, we used to play billboards like in Chinatown, I think, and like, yeah. So there's a bunch, there's a bunch of venues that are kind of within Melbourne, and Melbourne's always been a great crowd for us. Um, I remember playing the live, the live musical ball with Paramore and Tour and Pilots. God, me, like all those years ago, 2013, 2014. Um, but I think the the reason I've kind of like mentioned the Roundhouse is because um, that was the first time I heard of the Roundhouse was when I watched the Parkway Drive documentary and they filmed that show. And I was like, oh, so that's like, you know, that's a, 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 a what do you call it? I a guess, pinnacle. A reachable, <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I guess like a, a reachable milestone, a goal that we can go for. And then I remember we did like a, a bunch of Sour Life Sideshow and did one there with a base member in the use. And I was like, when are we going to fucking headline this venue? So when we did it, it was like, I don't want to say like a sense of relief, but it was like, oh, we, we, we got there. We we can get there and we got there. So, um, yeah, I think Melbourne this tour is actually um, maybe even bigger than the Sydney show. So, um, and there's definitely, you know, it's been the fastest selling one. So I feel like there's people in Melbourne that are pretty gassed on the, on the tour. So I'm looking, I'm just generally looking forward to being back. And as, as we kind of said at the front end of this conversation, like, you know, to be in a band uh, for, for, and be, as fortunate as we've been to travel and see the world and like to be able to come back and, and play some some great shows in Australia all this all these years on is it's pretty remarkable. So yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And um yeah, we're there to give it everyone a good show. So hopefully people will walk away feeling like they got had a good night and all that sort of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Now I was at a wedding a few weeks ago and as the bride and groom came in to take their first dance, um it was to take on the world. How does that make you feel so, that people are using such pivotal moments in their life to to your music? I guess yeah, that's that's always something that I kind of um, I can't really get my head around the fact that you know we could be soundtracking these you know monumental and also at times very intimate uh, moments for people within their life with their loved ones or their families, their friends. It's like yeah, it's interesting because you, you it's that that's that's the thing about putting out art I guess into the world is that it starts off with like it being very self-serving and it's very much about you know feeding your soul and or you know telling your story to yourself almost um and then with you know there's it's on your radar that it's going to be put out to the world and it does and then people start inhabiting it for themselves and like claiming it as their own or dismissing it because it's not for them so it's like that really um strange space I think well, I always find it quite strange that like you know you make this thing which is so personal and then it becomes really personal to somebody else um and I think it's music and I guess art are probably and and, and probably like literature and stuff like that are the very few forms in which that happens you know where it really does it does become you know um yeah it becomes so integral to somebody else uh, and you know that song in particular has been uh a really uh powerful mouthpiece i guess to the band because like loads of people have discovered the band through that song but that song is also kind of like i guess we've always been renowned for within our fan base anyway for like a slow jam you know yeah. like knocking out a good a good slow jam um, and you know we've done before it was like no one's a better or a crash or fireworks or you know always a track that was like the slow song and they said everyone would be waiting for and now it's take on the world and it has been pretty much since it came out so um yeah I think it's really beautiful and really touching that people have care uh, or we've soundtrack a relationship in their life to the extent that you know they feel that it kind of encaptures encapsulate sorry them um that strongly that you know kind of features in their in their wedding or something like that so yeah it's really cool and, uh, it is very, it really is very, yeah, a, a beautiful thing um just quickly um with the exception of dan coming in just a bit later you guys have 
been together for so long and it's it's just such a rare thing these days for a group to have the same members all the way through. You must just have a brilliant working relationship. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, Dan came in when uh, Dan came in when we were literally booking tours on MySpace and like going up and playing to, you know, four people in a fucking bar in Wales. Do you know what I mean? So we only had our other drummer Joe for a, a limited time, and um, you know, he was a great, a great dude and a great drummer. But like, you know, you meet Six Bard when Dan joined the band. You know, um, and we've been the same unit. Uh, this is our 18th year um and it's i think i don't know what what other artists would say the ingredients to keeping the band together so to speak for that amount of time is but ours has always been very simple um everyone gets paid the same everyone has the same amount of shares in the business and everybody has a voice at the table and that goes that that goes right through everything. People, different people in the band, pick up different aspects of it. Like, like for example, on this album, I've done all the press, and I will like be sort of the public facing, you know, denominator if you like. Um, Max is Max is doing all the merch. Matt kind of like knocks in and helps with some of the production conversations. Dan does all the, you know, all the playback and all the Ableton rigs and all that sort of stuff that we need to build our show, like intros and interludes and that sort of shit. So like everyone's kind of like mucking in. And I yeah. think that, you know, it's, um, I've just, we've always just valued uh, each other more and the position of the others in the band than probably ourselves. And I think that's why it's worked is because there's not, look, there's definitely been times I'm sure where, uh, the others will have, um, you know, mixed emotions, you know, about me uh, and vice versa. There's times where I've been like, fucking hell, I want to punch you in the face really badly. <laughs> but but that's, I guess that's a get, uh, you know, isn't too dissimilar to a family dynamic when you've been together for so long and we've kind of grown up from kids to adults and you know, we've been through each other's highlights and also the lowest points that we've all had has been really, the the band has kind of been very um, imperative in the healing of those sort of, those sort of moments. So we're very, very close. We're very close all, also with all the families. Like in a couple of weeks, they're having a big you me at six barbecue at Max's dad's mum and dad's house. We're all going with the siblings and the partners and the animals and whatever. It's like, you know, because that's what we've that's what we've cultivated. And I think yes. that's whatever happens in the future for this band, there's there will be no regrets about um how we've looked after one another and how we have done this the right way. And I do think there is something to be said for the fact that our fans feel a very strong affiliation to this band because they see this band as a band of brothers. And it's it's always been just those five guys. And I think maybe over the years, had there be, been public fallouts or changing of lineups or, you know, whatever, oh, it's it's a one-man band and these guys are just fucking the blokes that turn up and plug in the play. I don't I don't know how that resonates with people. Um and yeah, none of us see ourselves as stars, none of us see ourselves as other than anything other than equals not only to one another but to the people on the barrier and the people in the audience. Um, you know, we're not we're nothing special. We're just a bunch of dudes who happen to be good at being together and good at writing music together. Um and that's it. So, and you know, maybe there's maybe that even that as a sentiment has been something that might have maybe even held us back in in previous years. But I I don't think you can put a price on on uh, on being able to look yourself in the mirror and know that you've done everything the right way, both for yourself and for those around you. So um, that's kind of where we're at, and I think that's the secret. No. And not, it's not really. It's, it doesn't feel like a secret to me. It feels like a very obvious way of dealing with stuff. But, you know, you'd be amazed at the amount of time that we spent with 
with bands on tour when they don't even hang out and the only time they see each other is when they're on stage and there's no connection whatsoever between them. Uh, you know, and I think, you know, we, we're the kind of band that like, we're, we're pe paying our crew furlough during the pandemic, even when we didn't have any fucking money uh, because we saw them as family. So then it hurts when they go off and work with other people. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's like, I guess that's the thing is that we've probably put ourselves in a couple of positions over the last two decades where it's been at our, our detriment. But, you know, it is what it is. Again, as I said, it's more important for us to to be authentic with one another and, you know, do the right thing than it is to, to achieve anything else. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, absolutely. It's so refreshing to hear that. Um, And it just it is a testament as to why you are so good and why you've lasted so long and, and why we're seeing you back here again in Australia. So thank you so much for chatting with me today, Josh. I really appreciate your time and um, we'll see you in just a few weeks in Melbourne. Absolutely. Make sure that uh, you sort out to Tiana to come and say hello at some point during the gig. And uh, yeah. Oh, we'll look, I've got so many more questions here to ask. So that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, nice. Yeah, we can do that for sure. <laughs> thank you so much, Josh. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank Have a good you. evening. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.